To show that these two functions are inverses of each other, remember we must be able to demonstrate that we can take f of g of x, and if that were to equal x for all domain in g of x, and likewise if g of f of x equals x for all the domain values of f of x. For those two conditions, for those are true, then we know that we have an inverse function. So let's look at these two functions and see, are they inverses of each other or not? So let's begin with pick that pin back up, f of x equals 3 times x plus a 2. So f of g of x is saying let's evaluate that function at g of x. which equals 3 times g of x plus 2. g of x in this particular case says 3 times g of x, which is x minus 2 over 3 plus a 2. Let's simplify that down. The 3's cancel or factor out, left with an x minus 2 plus a 2 and that equals an x. So looking at f of g of x, my result is x. So, so far, that's, that part shows me an inverse. We also have to check the other way around as well. So let's check out, where should we do that at, folks? Let's do it over here. Let's have g of x. So g of x, didn't drop the pin that time, equals uh, my g of x function is x minus 2, so we have an x minus 2 over 3. g of x, g of f of x, that well, should have been all f of x, equals f of x minus 2 over 3. All I was doing was substituting f of x into the equation. Working that down, f of x is 3x plus 2 minus a 2 all over 3. Let's simplify that. 3x plus 2 uh, minus a 2 all over 3. Uh, 2 plus 2 factors out. So I have a 3x over a 3, and that equals just an x. And so we show that these two functions are inverses of each other. Another way to unpack that uh, video that we just looked at of what happened with the define or determining if this was an inverse function or not is imagine what we're doing. We're starting with an x, we're multiplying it by a 3. And then we're adding 2. And this is the function moving in that direction, takes an x, turns it to a 3x plus a 2. Now reversing back the other way, notice that I'm subtracting a 2, then I'm dividing by a 3, and I'm back to x. And that's where the inverse is happening. So we have a process that's going that way, and then it's being undone by going the other direction. So I hope you can kind of get a sense and see that's what's happening to those values that we have as we're flushing them through the first function, then undoing them as we run through the second function.